Hi there everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be testing a whole load of different 5.5 and 6 inch props from the likes of DAL, GEMFAN and HQ and we're going to be looking at how they compare on the thrust test stand in terms of their performance and efficiency. We're also going to be looking at how these 5.5 and 6 inch props stack up against a typical 5 inch prop in terms of performance and we're also going to be talking a little bit about the sound level from these props as well. It's a lot to cover in one video, so let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. Before we dive into the test results, I haven't done prop testing for a little while, so here's a rapid fire recap of the test equipment that I use to get these measurements. All right, so let me take you through the test setup that I use for this testing. Obviously, starting with the motor, this is the AOS Supernova 2207. That's the motor that I'm going to be using to drive all the props for this test. You can see that it's got a little bit of reflective tape attached to it. And behind here is an optical RPM sensor, which allows a very accurate measurement of the RPM of the motor as it's driving the prop. If we move back, you can see there are a couple of load cells here on the thrust test stand. And these load cells are used to measure the torque that the motor is exerting on the prop as it's spinning it. We have an ESC here. This is actually an AM32 ESC, and that's used to drive the motor. And it's controlled by the test board back here, which runs the test according to an automated test script and also measures the voltage and current that's being supplied to the motor at the same time. Coming down here, we've got another load cell. This load cell is used to measure the thrust that the prop is able to generate. And then the whole system is connected to a big battery, this 5,000 milliamp hour success cell, and also separately to a power supply which keeps the voltage topped up to a constant 24 volts for all of the prop testing. Before I carry on, I'd like to give a huge thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon. Without their support, I wouldn't be able to continue to make independent testing videos like this. If you find this work valuable and you'd like to join us and support more videos like this going forward, then you can find links down in the video description. You can join the Patreon from just a few dollars a month and you'll get access to all of the raw data from this testing and all of the previous testing I've done on props, motors and video systems. Thank you for your support. Before we look in detail at which are the best 5.5 and 6 inch props, we have to ask ourselves what do you get when you move from a 5 inch prop to a larger size like a 5.5 or even a 6 inch prop? Well, I've prepared this graph to kind of show you how things change as you move between different prop sizes. So we have a standard 5 inch, 5.5 and 6 inch prop shown on this chart. The 5 inch is in green, the 5.5 in red and the 6 inch in blue. And you can see that there are a few things that change as we move up in the size. The first is that the responsiveness of the prop, how fast a motor can accelerate or decelerate a prop, reduces as you make the prop larger because it has more moment of inertia. Now you can compensate for this by using a larger motor that produces more torque but if you're still running that kind of 2207-ish size motor but you're looking at maybe a 5.5 or a 6 inch prop you're going to see a drop in responsiveness. That means the quad is going to be less able to follow really sharp quick stick inputs. Thrust, well thrust is going to increase a lot. You're going to be able to carry more weight. You're going to be able to lift more with a larger prop, even on the same motor. And that's because a larger prop is more efficient. So we see that the efficiency also goes up. We get more thrust for the same amount of power, or we get uh, the same amount of thrust at a lower power requirement. So that efficiency is also improving as the prop size is getting bigger. Vibration is going to increase. We're going to see the vibration that we experienced through the frame and in the flight controller is going to increase as the prop gets larger. And that's going to be exacerbated by a larger frame. Larger frames are typically less stiff. So that's why as you go to larger frames, you'll see um, techniques come in like using truss structures for the frames. In my AOS frames, as they get bigger, you'll see they have more kind of vertical arm structures and things like that to try and make them stiffer. The advance ratio also tends to go down and that means that the uh, the prop wash handling tends to get a little bit better on a larger quad but the top speed tends to get a little bit lower. Now this is offset by the fact that a larger quad is often able to fly for longer and is more efficient so it might be able to maintain a higher speed for a longer time but in terms of absolute maximum top speed increasing the prop size tends to slightly reduce top speed. And that's why we see world record runs for quadcopters in terms of top speed typically set by 5-inch drones because they are the fastest. So 
Hopefully that helps with the comparison of different size props. And now let's launch into looking at those 5.5 and 6 inch props and seeing which one of them is going to be best for the type of flying that you might like to do if you're looking to build a quad of that slightly larger size. All right, so now it's time to take a look at the test data. And this data was collected using two different types of test. The first is a throttle ramp from zero to 100% throttle over 10 seconds with the thrust stand measuring the power, the thrust, the efficiency, RPM torque, and things like that. And the second test is a responsiveness test where the motor steps from 10 to 50% throttle and back again multiple times. And then we average the acceleration and deceleration of the prop to give a measure of its responsiveness. The first graph I want to talk about is the thrust versus RPM plot. And this shows how much thrust a prop produces at a given RPM. And there are two things we can take away from this chart. The first is how heavy or light the pitch of a particular prop is. A heavier pitch prop is going to produce more thrust at a lower RPM than a lighter pitch prop, and so is going to move more to the left on the chart. The second thing that we can take away is how well a particular prop is matched to the motor. So in this case, we're looking at the AOS Supernova 2207, and the prop that is best matched to the motor is the one that produces the maximum thrust. So here we can see that the Master Airscrew 6x4.5x3 is the best matched prop that we have on this test to the Supernova 2207 because it's the one that's able to extract the most performance in terms of thrust out of that combination of motor and prop. If you have a prop that's too heavy, the motor can't produce enough torque to drive the prop up to a high enough RPM to get the best possible thrust. And in that case, you'd be better looking for a slightly larger motor that can produce more torque. And if you have a lighter pitch prop, then the motor runs out of RPM before it runs out of torque and you don't get the best possible performance. And you'd be better off with either a motor with a higher KV or a motor that's slightly smaller and lighter weight because you don't need the torque that the larger motor is producing for that lighter prop. We can simplify this data and make it motor independent by looking at the thrust at a certain RPM. In this case, I'm using 14,000 RPM, and we can see that there's a huge range of thrust produced by different props at that same RPM, from 250 grams by the HQ 5.5 by 2.2 by 3, all the way up to 750 grams for the HQ 6 by 4.5 by 3. In general, a larger diameter prop with a larger pitch is going to produce more thrust and is going to appear further to the right. But as with all these things, you can't really know unless you test it. So hopefully uh, this data will give you that clear indication of which props are going to be heavier and lighter pitch. The next graph I want to share with you is the efficiency versus thrust plot. And here we're looking at the efficiency of the prop in terms of the grams of thrust that it can produce per watt of mechanical power generated by the motor. And we're comparing that to the amount of thrust that it's generating in total. And there are a couple of things that I want to talk about here. The first is that there is a trend downwards on all of these lines. And that means that as we ask the prop to generate more thrust, it's always going to get less efficient. So when we're comparing the efficiency of props, we need to do it at equal thrust. Because if we compare it at the same throttle level, then the efficiency could be dependent on the amount of thrust that the prop is producing. So we have to compare them at equal thrust. And the second thing is to notice that there is one prop here that does something really strange. This is the Emacs Avon LR 6x3.8x2 prop. And you can see that its efficiency dives down above about 1,000 grams of thrust. And then we get this really weird sort of wiggling line. And this is to do with aerodynamic flutter. The prop is not stiff enough to maintain its shape at these high RPM and thrust levels. And so it starts to flutter and that reduces the efficiency and also creates an enormous amount of noise. And I'm going to play a little clip for you now so you can hear what that sounds like. Again, we can simplify and clarify this data by looking at the efficiency at a certain thrust level. Here I've chosen 1000 grams of thrust, and we can see that the efficiency ranges from below 3.5 grams of thrust per mechanical watt for the Emacs Avon LR 6x3.8x2, all the way up to well over 4 grams of thrust per mechanical watt for the Master Airscrew 6x4.5x3. If you're focused on efficiency, then this is going to be the chart that's going to be really useful for you to pick a prop that's going to give you the longest possible flight time. And just because a prop is called LR 
doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be good for long range efficient cruising. Again, we really need to look at the data to see how things really play out on the test stand. The next chart I want to show you is advance ratio. Now advance ratio is the ratio between the axial flow velocity down through the propeller and the tip speed of the propeller. And the reason this is important is because it strongly affects two things. The top speed that you're able to achieve with a particular propeller and the prop wash handling. We tend to find that props with a low advance ratio have a lower top speed, but they have good prop wash handling. Conversely, props with a large advance ratio are great for achieving a high top speed, but they tend to have poor prop wash. And we can see that there is a big range of advance ratios that we see here, ranging from a very low advance ratio with the master air screw 6x4.5x2, all the way up to the largest advance ratio with the HQDP 6x4.5x3. One thing to be very aware of here is that advance ratio is also related to the number of blades that a prop has. So we shouldn't really be comparing advance ratio between two and three bladed props. So if you want a prop with a low advance ratio, you want to make sure that it's low compared to other props with the same number of blades. When we're thinking about what it takes to get a very smooth flying quad that is very locked to your stick inputs, a key part of that is the responsiveness of the prop and motor combination. The more responsive the prop is, the faster it can change RPMs and change the amount of thrust that it produces in response to the request from the flight controller. And the less delay there is in that system, the closer the quad is going to follow your stick inputs and the better it's going to be able to react to any turbulence or uh, wind shear that you might experience when you're flying. This is a really key parameter for getting super smooth footage. And we can see that there's a big range of responsiveness on all of these props I've tested, ranging from less than 120,000 RPM per second for something like the HQDP 6x4.5x3, up to more than 180,000 RPM per second for a very lightweight prop like the HQ 5.5x2.2x3. The key parameter here is the inertia of the prop and also the amount of drag that it has. So we tend to find that lightweight, light pitch props are very responsive and heavy, heavy pitch props are much less responsive. So if you're fundamentally just focused on getting super smooth footage and you want the quad to be very stable and locked to your sticks, you're definitely going to want to lean towards a prop that's much higher up on this chart in terms of responsiveness. The final piece of data that I want to look at is vibration. And here we're looking at the vibration generated by the prop in root mean squared G over a range of thrust levels. And vibration is a bit of a tricky thing to measure because it can vary prop to prop depending on manufacturing tolerances. But what we can see is that in general, the two bladed props tend to produce more vibration at low thrust and more vibration at high levels of thrust than the three bladed props even if they produce similar levels of vibration in the kind of middle range of thrust. That for me is a reason to maybe steer clear of two bladed props if you're really focused on getting very smooth flight because if you use a two bladed prop you might find that you get some vibration at very low throttle or some vibration at high throttle and you might not know why and it might be down to the prop vibration. In general, all the three bladed props that I tested had pretty good vibration performance across the board from very low to very high throttle. And uh, so that's a sort of safe choice, I think, if you're looking for a very, very smooth flying quad. Now that we've looked at all the data, I'm sure you've already made up your mind about which prop might be the right one for you. And if you have, then please let me know what that is down in the comments and what you're going to use it for, because I think that'd be really interesting. There's just a few props that I picked out as being interesting to me. The first is the Ethics K2. Despite being a two bladed prop, this performs quite well in terms of vibration and well across the board. So it's kind of a good jack of all trades prop. If you're not really sure exactly what you want to do, the Ethics K2 can do everything reasonably well. If you know that you're focused on getting the smoothest, most responsive possible flight feel, you're not so worried about top end performance, then the HQ 5.5x2.2x3 is a great choice. It's going to give you the most responsive and the smoothest possible flight. And this is actually the prop that I tend to fly on my AOS 5.5 because I like how, how smooth and responsive it is. If you're looking for a prop that's just going to give you the maximum possible performance and you've got a nice big motor to drive it that produces plenty of torque, then you could pick something like the HQ DP 6 by 45 x 3 That's going to give you masses of performance if you've got a motor that's got enough torque to drive it. 
And if you're looking for long range efficiency, the Master Airscrew 6x4.5x3 um, performed really, really well. It's not the most responsive prop, but you don't really need that for long range. It is very, very efficient though. So if you're looking to get the maximum possible flight time, that's the one to pick. And it's also really, really well matched to the Supernova 2207. So if you're looking for a prop and motor combination, that would probably be the one that I would go for based on this testing. The final prop that I want to talk about is the Azure Power 6145, because the reason I've picked this out is due to its noise profile. I'm going to play you a couple of clips now of the HQDP 6x4.5x3 and the Azure Power 6145 just to give you an idea of the difference in the sound there. Hopefully you could hear the difference in noise between those two clips. The Azure Power has more of a kind of whooshing sound and the HQ 6x4.5x3 has more of a hard buzzsaw noise that carries a bit more. I wonder if it's due to the shape of the Azure Power. It's got this slightly swept back blade profile and I wonder if that just helps reduce the, the noise a little bit or at least change the character of the sound to make it more of a kind of whooshing noise rather than that kind of very piercing buzzsaw type tone. Anyway, let me know down in the comments what you think about the sound difference between those two props and whether that's um, something that you would factor into a decision on which prop to fly. All right, so that brings us towards the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that all of the information I presented helps guide you towards the prop that's gonna be best for what you wanna do. If you wanna check out all of the raw data from this testing and all of my previous prop, motor and VTX testing, there's a link down in the video description to my Patreon and all of that stuff is available for about the price of a cup of coffee. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying. Mm -hmm.